I'm recording this for the United Church of Canada Stewardship Division that put together this series of epiphany ser services for us. On this first Sunday in Epiphany, when we mark the baptism of Jesus, let's consider what we believe about baptism. First and foremost, baptism is about affirmation. To affirm means to state positively or assert truth, the truth about someone and about our relationship with them. To affirm is to ascribe or give value. Baptism is about the affirmation that there is something sacred about life and that a piece of that sacred goodness is found deep within us. It acknowledges a new beginning, as did the birth of Jesus. Now we see the instance that marks the beginning of what will be a very public ministry, his baptism, the affirmation that he is God and belongs to God, and the affirmation that we belong to God as well. We hear this affirmation in the words, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased, from Mark chapter 1 verse 11. These words affirm the life within and that it is good. When God affirms us, we can affirm others, just as when Jesus was affirmed by God so that he could do the same. When we feel affirmed, we feel as though we can be part of the community in all of its aspects, such as stewardship and discipleship. When we feel affirmation, we can give of ourselves and go deeper into our faith because we feel safe to do so. The truth is that we all long for affirmation, but too often it seems that it comes too late after we feel separated, after we've struggled, after we've lost, or as if we need to prove ourselves to receive affirmation. But God's affirmation is different. God's affirmation is spoken to Jesus and to us before we earn it, before we do anything to cause it to happen, before it is solicited. Affirmation is indeed the cornerstone of grace, which becomes the cornerstone then of stewardship and discipleship. The baptism of Jesus tells us that our baptism, our confirmation and our affirmation of faith are not simply about membership in a particular congregation or church. Although these rites of passage which mark milestones in our lives, are important for our sense of personal belonging. They also remind us that we are God's children, regardless of age or race, sexual orientation or socioeconomic status or any other label we humans think of as a reason either not to engage or to exclude others from engaging. In order to come to any sense of affirmation from this act, though, we must first put aside the notion that we might have that baptism is about cleansing us from sins or asking for God's forgiveness. For how can we look at a newborn baby and think that they are full of wrong? We are also not to say that those who are not baptized or damned or unworthy of God's love Baptism affirms the inherent worth of each of us and is a physical sign of a spiritual reality that we belong to a loving God and that the goodness that comes from God is deep within us and serves as a communal symbol of God's unconditional love. In our baptism, as in the baptism of Jesus, we celebrate that we are loved. A love that comes before anything we may have done or anything we have yet to do. I suggest that baptism is about gracious blessing, a mysterious way of deeply knowing that we belong to God. 
God knows this, but we need something physical to remind us of this spiritual reality. We need to remember that we all we are, all we have is welcomed by God and revealed and shared in thankful response to our belonging to God. In baptism, this is not only personally affirmed, but is communally affirmed by those who surround us in baptism. Not even Jesus was baptized in private. It was important for him to be baptized in public so that the affirmation was heard by all who were present. Through this, then, we can use baptism as an opportunity to affirm one another. Before we are asked to, before a good action is done, before we've been able to form a judgment on whether or not it is deserved, we can affirm each other because God has already affirmed us. And when we are blessed to be in the presence of one who's being baptized, we remember our own goodness. And we recall that God affirms us every morning that we open our eyes and see the goodness that is God's world. And so today, we are challenged to think about what we believe about baptism. How does it shape our understanding of being a community in relationship with God and being intentionally welcoming? How can we create opportunities as a baptizing community to affirm each other? How does baptism lead us into generosity and discipleship. In the movie, O oh Brother, Where Art Thou?, which follows the journey of three escaped convicts, there's a scene where baptisms are taking place in a river. The men who have broken out of prison figure that they've done so much wrong in their lives that baptism will give them a new beginning. And so they are immersed in the water. But I think what they really do is to affirm the goodness in one another so that they can continue on their journey toward wholeness. The act of baptism doesn't make them perfect, but opens them up to the goodness that is within them and around them. It calls them to discipleship. Mm -hmm. It calls them to offer their gifts to the world, even if those gifts aren't always understood or received very well. The song that is sung during this scene, Down to the River to Pray, is an invitation to walk with God and to invite others to that journey of stewardship and discipleship that has the power to transform people and systems. As a baptizing church loved and affirmed by God, we too are called to that journey of stewardship and discipleship, to generously share what we have in gratitude to God. May it be so. Amen and amen.